Robots can kill people, but is it murder? To murder, you need to have willful intent. And right now, I don't think any robot is really capable of that. Despite this, many people out there still fear robots and their ever-increasing power. Some people think there will come a day when they will turn on us if we give them too much strength and intelligence. My name is Danny Burke, and whatever your thoughts are on this topic, you're going to want to hear all about the top 10 robots that ended lives. Starting off at number 10 now, we have Ford. On the 25th of January 1979, Robert Williams became the first person to be killed by a robot. He was working at the Ford Motor Company casting plant in Michigan when he was struck in the head and killed by the arm of a one-ton production line robot. The robot was part of a parts retrieval system that moved material from one part of the factory to another. Now on that day, the robot began running slowly. Robert climbed into the storage rack to retrieve the parts manually and that's when he was struck in the head. Since then, factory robots and the workers that monitor them have become a lot safer. Many new protocols have helped make the whole environment better. Next up at number nine now we have the Tesla. As a fully automated self-driving car, some people see the Tesla Model S as more artificial intelligence than just plain old car. On May 7th, 2016, the tech world was stunned when Joshua Brown became the first person to be killed in a self-driving car accident. He was driving his Model S when it collided with a truck while engaged in autopilot mode. The car requires the driver to keep their hands on on the wheel even in autopilot. An investigation found that during the 37 minute drive, Brown had his hands on the wheel for just 25 seconds. Some people said this was proof of the dangers of self-driving cars, but a Tesla spokesperson said the autopilot does not allow the driver to abdicate responsibility. Next up at number eight now, we have electrocution. In August 2015, 24 year old Ramji Lal was killed by a robot in a factory in India. It was a car parts factory and Ramji had been working there for for about 18 months when it happened. He was working with a robot that is programmed to weld metal sheets together. One of them got dislodged, so Ramji reached behind the machine to adjust it. At that point, the machine sparked back to life and pierced Ramji's abdomen. It was reported that at that point, Ramji was electrocuted and died almost instantly. The company management and the contractor were charged with causing death due to negligence. Next up at number seven now, we have Wanda Holbrook. In 2015, Wanda Holbrook, a technician at an auto parts factory in Michigan was killed by a malfunctioning robot. The 57 year old was working on the robot when his arm swung out and crushed her head, killing her. It was a devastating shock to her husband, her three children and grandchildren, and all of her co-workers at the factory. In 2017, her husband Bill Holbrook sued five robotics companies who were involved in the robot's design and manufacture. Now he said they all played a role in his wife's death and that the accident was due to their negligence. Moving on to number six now, we have the robot cop. This one was no accident. In 2016, Dallas police were locked in a tent standoff with Mika Johnson. The former soldier had shot and killed five police officers and wounded nine more as well as two civilians. He was holed up in a local college during which the police gave him an ultimatum. Come outside and surrender or remain inside and risk lethal force. He didn't come outside and so police sent in a robot with a brick of C4 attached to it. It was detonated after it entered the building. The explosion killed Johnson and and damaged the robot. A robot bombing was a first for a police department in the US. Next up at number five now, we have Kenji Urada. He was a Japanese engineer who was working at an industrial factory while trying to repair one of the robots there. In July 1981, a glitch with the robot made it pin him against another machine and crush him to death. So, how exactly did this happen? Well, the robot was in fault repairs and was in a separate area behind a door that shut down the robot when anyone walked through it. The problem was, Urada didn't didn't use the door. He jumped right over the fence. When he brushed against the robot, he accidentally activated it. This was the first Japanese person to be killed by a robot in this way. Moving on to number four now, we have the robot cannon. In 2007, the South African army began investigating how a software glitch led to an anti-aircraft cannon opening fire on the soldiers who were operating it. Although they are guns, many people see these things as more like lethal robots. They come with passive and active radar, laser, target targeting and can even reload by themselves. It doesn't even need humans to function. Perhaps that's why it made it so lethal when it malfunctioned on that day. The gun sprayed hundreds of high explosive cannon shells around the area and only stopped when it was empty, by which point nine soldiers were dead and 11 injured. Moving on to number three now, we have the robot surgeons. A 2013 report in the US found that over the previous five years, robot assisted surgery had been linked to the deaths of 144 people in the country. Robotic surgery has been 
praised as one of the great medical advances of the century, but sometimes there have been fatal errors. The robots allow surgeons to enter much smaller parts of the human body. Sometimes the surgeons don't even need to be in the same room, building, or even country. Of the deaths noted in the report, the causes range from system errors causing delays to bits of machinery falling into the patient's open wounds. All right, next up at number two now, we have Volkswagen. In 2015, German car manufacturer Volkswagen announced that a robot had killed a contractor at one of their production plants. The unnamed 22 year old was part of a team setting up the robot when it grabbed him and crushed him against a metal plate. A spokesperson for the company said that an early investigation seemed to point the blame at human error rather than a problem with the robot. He said it normally operates within a confined area at the plant, grabbing auto parts and manufacturing them. Prosecutors were considering whether to bring charges and if so, against whom. And finally number one now we have McDonald's. In 2009, a malfunctioning robot killed Maria Vital when she was working at a factory that supplies McDonald's. The robot was a palletizer. Its only job is to stack boxes on a pallet. Now at some point, it broke down. Maria entered the cage to remove the box and then reset the robot. However, the robot was still active and grabbed Maria as if she was one of the boxes that needed moving. It crushed her torso. Her co-workers tried desperately to free her from its grip, but it only stopped once the whole machine had its power shut down. Well, those stories were pretty unnerving, you could say, but personally, they don't put me off robots. I think robots are only as good as we make them. The smarter we are with them and the safer we make them, the more useful they will be until there will be nothing to worry about, I think. Or is that just wishful thinking? Let me know. I am Danny Burke. Thank you as always for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video. <laughs>